The Alps, the highest mountain range in Europe and the impressive backdrop for the hardest paraglide and hiking adventure race in the world. The Red Bull X Alps from Salzburg to Monaco. The seventh edition of the Red Bull X Alp sees athletes hike or fly 1,038 kilometers across the peaks and valleys from Salzburg to Monaco in the fastest time possible. It's known as the world's hardest adventure race and all have to pass 10 defined turn points which takes every bit of skill they have to navigate this mountainous region. The winner of the last three editions and a legend in this sport, Christian Kriegelmauer, is ready to go. It's very an uh, emotional uh, moment to prepare a half a year seriously to this race and then to stay here and to know in one hour it's the start. And uh, I'm very happy to go out in the nature to be free to do my, my sport and to make hike and fly till the Mon Monaco. The lineup consists of some legendary characters and many familiar names, like Paul Guschelbauer, who's taking part for the third time, Aaron Durogati from Italy, Frenchman Antoine Gerard, and a lot of rookies like Sebastian Huber from Germany. There's also two women taking part this year. One of them is Don Westrom from the USA. And they're off from the historic Mozart Platz in Salzburg city center. Their destination is the cooling waters of Monaco at the Mediterranean Sea, 1,038 kilometers and 10 checkpoints or turn points away. First, however, they have to reach turn point one in these blistering hot conditions, which is not made any easier running the tarmac and concrete streets of the historic city of Salzburg. The overall number of newcomers at the Red Bull X Alps has never been higher. 21 of the 32 athletes are competing for the very first time. Even though they're new to this competition, they are all experts in this sport. But to take part, they go through a rigorous selection process. The Geisberg Peak above Salzburg, an idyllic location for turn point one. Running in these hot conditions is no walk in the park. It's hard work as athletes have to carry their equipment with them all the way. The first athlete to reach the summit is Sebastian Huber from Germany. The Bavarian Sunny Boy started paragliding in 2008 and is working as a paraglide instructor. Behind him is Aaron Durogati, a paragliding World Cup winner from Murano in Italy and a well-known and experienced ex-Alps athlete. Third to reach the Geisberg Peak is Austrian athlete Paul Guschelbauer. Christian Kriegel Maurer is one of the first athletes in the air. The flying conditions have never been this good to start a Red Bull X Alps, and the athletes take advantage. Everyone in the field passes turn point two at the peak of the Dachstein. Austrian Stefan Gruber is in the lead, but Kriegel Maurer and Paul Guschelbauer are hot on his heels. In the afternoon, the leading pack of athletes are already heading quickly west to the next destination. That's turn point three, Aschau Kimse, the Kampenbahn. Day one is coming to an end and the leading group is landing right behind turn point three where they will spend their first night.
Flight conditions are not as favorable to start day two, but some competitors take off from the Kampenwand anyway, struggling to find lift at first. The decision is if waiting out the bad weather will pay off or if it's better to push on and walk along the valley floor from turn point three. A second group, which includes Dorlado and Petio, decide to wait and this tactic pays off. They keep a close eye on the weather and by midday they are airborne and riding the thermals. The pack of athletes on the ground realize their mistake as they are easily passed from above. Kriegel Maurer and Paul Guschelbauer are now in the top spots with Stefan Gruber who took a flight path too far south and is relegated to third position. Kriegel Maurer is the first Red Bull X Alps athlete to reach turn point four at the Lermus Tirol at Zugspitz Arena. After more than 80 kilometers in the air helped along by great weather conditions, he is able to sign in and continue on towards turn point five, extending his advantage. Paul Guschelbauer reaches turn point four shortly after Maurer. Guschelbauer, however, is forced to walk the last distance to sign in because he lands off target by a few kilometers. But the field of chasers is right behind them. One of them being French pilot Gaspard Petiot, who has spent more than 200 hours in the air every year since 2006. Aaron Durogati, who was seventh in the 2013 edition of the Red Bull X Alps, is part of the chase group as well. Durogati broke his leg in October, but thanks to his fighting spirit, he's back in the game having an incredible performance so far. Unfortunately, Romanian pilot and ex-Alps veteran Tomo Kokonea receives bad news over the phone. Penalty, 48 hour. It's crazy. Yesterday for fly, a little bit high for altitude for Verboten zone. But after checking his tracking device for a second time, the race officials decide that the flight path he took was just within the limit. So the Romanian athlete who has been part of every x Alp so far and therefore has his own following of fans is able to make it to turn point four on day two. But for one athlete, the race has already come to an end. We wanted to fly far, um, but the headwind was so strong that we couldn't fly so far as we hoped, and now we are eliminated. The rules of the race eliminate the last place athlete every 48 hours. With the elimination of Yvonne Date, that leaves Dawn Westrom as the sole remaining woman in the Red Bull X Alps 2015, bringing the total field of athletes still competing to 31. The situation? Yep. Uh, my feet hurt a little bit, but otherwise, I feel really good. I think I've done couple hundred kilometers and yeah, I'm going. One person who is always on the athlete's track to make sure decisions are correct is race director Christoph Weber. It's tough to keep an eye on all the athletes scattered all over the Alps, but up-to-date high-tech equipment makes it possible for him to follow each athlete's track. The most important thing is to always uh, have a good internet connection and for this I, I have this Skyroam device or a Wi-Fi wi wherever I am. And then I can check uh, via live tracking uh, where they are and what they do. The most important tool is the live tracking tool. You know, we have every second uh, one uh, point updated. So every, I see by every second the uh, move uh, the athlete does. So I can track him very easily and follow him very closely. The athletes are oh, okay. equipped with the latest high-tech gadgets oh, yeah. as well. A live tracking system makes it possible for every athlete to track his opponent, seeing the route they choose. I think it's charging. The Power Traveler charging tool makes sure the athletes can charge all their devices, even in the remotest areas. The weather changes the next day, turning to a disadvantage, making flying conditions very hard in Italy and the Northern Alps, testing both the athletes' bodies and their minds. I have a little pain in my right leg, okay, two days ago. But this morning, one moment, the little pain was uh, a big pain and impossible working. 
For a takeoff, athletes have to hike up as high as they can. The other side and then like that, it should be possible. Run up, just on the top. The deteriorating weather conditions make it very hard for the field of chasers to fly. Kriegel Maurer is in the lead and heading to Brenta Cimatosa in Italy on foot towards turn point five. Once more, the favorite is signing in first, but he has no time to lose. Flying conditions are good, so he's heading off again to the next stop, the Piz Korvac in Switzerland. But something he's not used to dealing with is having two athletes right on his heels. Every time it looks like Maurer is able to break away, Paul Guschelbauer and Sebastian Huber are not that far behind. Even though the weather conditions are in Kriegel's favor, the two of them are in a good mood and they sign in second and third. Time for a short break to escape the bad weather. We go up here to Brenta and uh, we were very lucky to arrive here before the thunderstorm is coming because it was really big. After the storm has passed, Sebastian Huber and Paul Guschelbauer are ready for another takeoff, heading towards turn point six. Kriegel Maurer is heading off for a late last flight of the day as well, trying to extend his advantage. The Swiss athlete won every single one of the last three X-Alps with a big lead, but this time it seems like it's not so easy for him to leave his chasers behind. While most athletes only have one lead lenser night pass, Guschelbauer won a second in the Power Traveler prologue two days before the start of the Red Bull X-Alps, so he doesn't hesitate to use one of them to shake off Sebastian Huber and catch up with Kriegel Maurer. In the morning, flying conditions are as good as they get, and he's heading off once again. While Guschelbauer is in the air heading after Kriegel, the field of chasers arrives at turn point five, led by rookie Stefan Gruber. The paragliding competition pilot from the Zillatal Valley of Austria is putting his expert racing skills to good use in this event, reaching turn point five in fourth place. He's so excited that he signs in under the wrong name, going for the gold standard, I guess. The field of rookies is incredibly strong this year and challenging the experienced pilots. Step by step, more and more athletes are reaching turn point five, taking off shortly after, heading towards turn point six, Piz Korvac in Switzerland. Woo! Meanwhile, Kriegel Maurer and his supporters are struggling with decisions. The mistake was that we did, I think, a quite good plan, but then we thought we can optimize it, avoid the passage where Kriegel has to walk down, but then the wind was wrong. The game, as we always say, is right place, right time, and I'm not so sure if this is right time, right place. There's no turning back now, though. While Kriegel Maurer is struggling, Paul Guschelbauer and Sebastian Huber are gaining ground thanks to great weather conditions. They are able to diminish the gap to Maurer. However, Kriegel stays in the lead, being the first one to reach Piskorvac on day five. Approximately 80 kilometers behind the leading group is the field of chasers with French pilot Gaspard Petillot, who's successfully putting his knowledge as a mountain guide into practice in this competition. On day six, another highlight is in sight, the Matterhorn. At 4,478 meters, this is one of the highest peaks on the route to Monaco and definitely one of the scenic attractions. 
Sebastian Huber in third position is also pushing hard and continues chasing Maurer. Yeah, if everything is okay and the weather conditions are fine, perhaps we can reach Kriegel. But it seems like nothing can stop Kriegel Maurer. While the other athletes are pushing forward on foot, he now seems to always be in the right place at the right time. He found the perfect spot for his next takeoff. Soon he's soaring at an incredible 3,600 meters, quickly approaching the Matterhorn. Just four hours behind Kriegel is Austrian Paul Guschelbauer. He reaches turn point seven in second position, followed by Sebastian Huber. As dusk settles, Paul Guschelbauer is still searching for a good takeoff point for the next day, hiking up as high as possible before the mandatory night break at 10.30 p.m. Another very cool day, um, making a good distance. Now I'm on 3000 meters in the hut and tomorrow I will go on the south side around the Matohan. and I hope I can fly another time, it will be cool. The next day Guschelbauer is climbing up even higher. He's taking off in the early morning in difficult wind conditions. Meanwhile, Sebastian Huber is exercising his patience. He's taking a break, waiting for better weather conditions. With the late start at 9 a.m., he proves that his decision was right as he passes Kuschelbauer in flight. It's not only the risk of the 48-hour elimination rule that sees athletes out of the competition. The day started really well. It was really cool and we arrived on top, the takeoff was perfect, it was just, it looked like the perfect day. I was flying with Ferdi and we were laughing and joking in the air. We were searching for takeoff. The only thing we found was a, a very steep hill and Ferdi took off perfectly. De Dorlado crashed shortly after takeoff and injured his foot which is now massively swollen. Luckily, there are no broken bones and he will be back on his feet again in three to four weeks. Uh, all together is not so bad and uh, I'm really happy I'm in one piece, you know, at the end that's, that's what matters. Toma Kokonea was also lucky things didn't turn out worse for him. He had to be taken to the hospital after a hard landing in turbulent conditions. So I just um, spoke with uh, Mr. Kokonea and he uh, had a, a broken elbow and uh, some uh, soft tissues at the nose and lost one tooth, but uh, um, the rest of him is it's in a good condition. I broke my harness today in the air, so I had to repair. And I'm very lucky that a friend of mine is here with a good atelier, saving machine, everything. So it's a perfect reparation and for sure it's stronger than before. I'm quite tired. My fitness, uh, it's okay, but uh, for the feet, um, it gets hard. And also for tomorrow, it looks windy, and we will see what happens. We come now at to this point where a short night is not long enough to, to recover. And we know that the chance to make a mistake gets the bigger, the more tired you are. There's a lot of challenges that athletes have to deal with during a race like this, but still, Kriegel Maurer has shown a lot of determination so far, and again, he's heading off in first position.
One week in and the length and hardships of the race are starting to take their toll. Newbie Sebastian Huber is getting ready for another hard race day. He's in third position at the moment, trying to catch up with Paul Guschelbauer, who is a mere 20 kilometers ahead of him. Now we are on the east side of Morblot, and the plan is to pass Morblot on the north side and go to Annecy directly. It's a good day for Guschelbauer as he was able to extend his head start with a good flight, reaching turn point nine, 50 kilometers ahead of Sebastian Huber. Is the podium already set? A moment of shock for Sebastian Huber as his glider collapses while he's trying to land at turn point nine. He's lucky to escape with no injuries. For eight days straight, Christian Kriegel-Maurer has awed fellow competitors and fans alike with a virtuoso display of flying prowess and flawless tactics at this year's Red Bull X Alps. Wow. Since setting off from Salzburg, he has flown and hiked much more than 2,000 kilometers over the mountains of Austria, Germany, Italy, Switzerland, and France through 10 turn points to Monaco. He reached his goal after eight days, four hours, and 37 minutes. Meanwhile, a thrilling battle is taking place for second position. Guschelbauer is grounded by strong winds as Sebastian Huber, 20 kilometers behind him, searches for a spot to take off from. Soon he is high up in the air, and by the time Guschelbauer is ready for another takeoff, Huber is already 80 kilometers ahead. Now on foot, Huber is heading towards the final turn point, claiming second place and winning the Mazda Rookie Trophy. For him, the clock stops here. Now it's time for the fun part, flying into Monaco. Kriegel Maurer is the first one to celebrate his fourth consecutive win. I really like the, the adventure. I like the hike and fly sport and maybe it's exactly what I can do best. So to be here as, as, a, as a winner, it's a very special feeling and, and I'm very happy. A moment to remember for Sebastian Huber. He flies into second place in his first ever Red Bull X Alps with an incredible time of eight days, 22 hours and 43 minutes. The goal was to take it as an adventure and it's a great feeling to be here, healthy and this is all. <laughs> the fight for third place is not over yet. Gaspar Petio and countryman Antoine Gerard along with Aaron Durogati are on Guschelbauer's heels in the hunt for the last spot on the podium. Guschelbauer is still struggling with the bad wind conditions. Exhausted and not landing very gracefully, Paul Guschelbauer is able to make it to third position, warmly welcomed by his fans and supporters. The endurance athlete and hotshot pilot ended up in ninth place in 2013 and is happy with his result in this year's race. It's great to reach Monaco again. Third place is also good. There was a chance to do better, but now I had in the end I had to fight for the third place. But it's perfect. I mean, it's, it's not a big difference to the first and the second still. And yeah, it's cool.
The 2015 Red Bull X Alps will be remembered as the most competitive and thrilling edition so far. The level is extremely high and it went higher and higher with every edition we made on it and you make a little mistake and you see that the level is so high that the others pass by and they leave you behind making a, just a little mistake. 19 of the 32 athletes reached the float in Monaco by the time the race clock stopped. Of the 21 rookies, an incredible 12 made it all the way to the finish line. This was the seventh edition of the world's toughest adventure race, the Red Bull X Alps 2015. The participating athletes have endured extreme conditions from thunderstorms and rain to strong winds that made flying difficult. From the cold of high altitudes to searing hot temperatures on the ground. And you can bet they'll be back for the next edition and we hope to see you again in 2017 for the next Red Bull X Alps. I have hope and I have power, so it will be good. Oh my God! I made it through by 10 minutes!